What is being original? Let me make this as clear as possible. Being 100% unconditionally original is impossible. I would debate that no one is truly original, because each idea is founded upon the ideas, creations, or discoveries of others. Being original isn't just about making something that has never been seen before, it's about making something different or new. Different and new don't entirely mean never seen before. Each aspect of something has a little bit of something else in it. There is oddly a confusion between coming up with an original idea and discovering something. Isaac Newton didn't come up with the idea of gravity, he discovered it. Being original is to be something that has a large enough difference from something else to be considered new. I am aware of what the definition says. Created directly and personally by a particular artist, not a copy or imitation. But if ideas stem from other ideas, then how can we truly say that something isn't an imitation of something else? Well, the base concept of an idea may be inspired from something else, but that doesn't mean the design is all the same. In other words, not a replica. In many scenarios, people throw around being original as something to be abided by in all cases, when it's actually not that easy. I'd rather that I say to be different than original, because being original by definition of the word is unaccomplishable. When people say original, they really mean different anyway. And I mean different in the way of being unlike anything else. I could have named the video How To Be Different, but what's known as original basically means different in the social context and literal applications of the word. If you're different, nobody will accuse you of being a copycat, or say you need to be more original. Because of the harsh difficulties of making something truly original, it would be much easier to make something different. So let me show you how to do just that. We first need an understanding of what makes something different. Different, not the same as another or each other, unlike in nature, form, or quality. Meet person one. Person one made this uninterrupted, smooth circle. Now meet person two. Person two sees the beauty of the circle and wants to make something like it as well. He starts off by making his own circle, 100% identical to the original. But person 2 is aware that he can't just make the same thing, so he then stretches the circle to make an oval. After that, he cuts the bottom half of the circle off, adding a line across, connecting the two points. Then he straightens out the two sides, making them intersect at a singular point, and therefore has made a triangle. In comparison to the circle, he has now made something different from what he had before. He has something original. The triangle and the circle are nothing alike. What's relevant here is the process in which he accomplished his goal. Gradual change over time is what makes what person 2 made something new. Even the most original people in history had to start by copying someone. We don't have smartphones because someone came up with the idea out of the blue. We have them because we had flip phones before then, home phones before that, and the telegraph before then. New things come from the change and improvement of ideas, content, art, and whatever else may require original thinking. Despite the hate against change, the world needs it. You might not even notice how something could improve until you already made the change. Change is a requirement if we want to move forward. The more random, the more we have a grasp on what we really want. Let's say a popular website decides to make a change to how it looks. While it may seem pointless, over time you'll most likely grow to like it better than the old one. Or the website could make something other than a graphical change. Maybe they choose to incorporate one of their other sites with its own, adding new features and such. Sometimes the best way to make something original is not to make anything at all. Combining multiple existing ideas has worked tremendously throughout history. Meet Person 3. He comes along and sees the creations of both Person 1 and 2. Finding them fascinating, he mixes the ideas to create a pentagon. These three people have all made something original. Person 1 was entirely original, making his shape from the thoughts in his head alone. So he is, by definition, original. Next is Person 2. Person 2 started with the base idea of Person 1, making changes to this idea, he came up with something entirely new on its own. 
with unique origins. So person two is by definition new. Lastly, person three has combined the ideas of both person one and two, making something that is by definition different. If our goal is to be original, then doing any of these three things will work just fine. I can't guarantee pure originality. You are still the one that has to come up with the ideas of possible change in the first place. Originality doesn't come straight from the mind, it comes from the minds of us all, showing once again that when we work together, originality is an actual possibility. Be careful though, because nobody likes their ideas to be stolen. If you are planning on doing something identical to someone else, be aware that they may not be happy with it. It would probably be best to see what you can do to alter it from the start. Being original is always a good idea, but I wouldn't say that it determines the entertainment value of a product. To use a YouTube example, there are plenty of unoriginal commentary channels out there that I still enjoy. Them copying Leafy or some other channel doesn't really matter to me too much if I enjoyed the video. So while being unoriginal is a point of criticism, I wouldn't say it's at the top of the list of things to worry about. As long as you're not stealing content at least, everything should be fine. But in general, originality is something that we all need a bit of. So good luck out there, and hopefully you can use my advice to make something truly great.